I recently purchased this dowling jig and I've been really impressed by how well it works for such a cheap tool. You may have seen a lot of uh, other woodworkers on YouTube using a Festool Domino and they always say uh, dowels would work just as well here. Um, and it, it's true, like this, this little uh, cheap jig will let you make joinery that is just as clean and hidden uh, as a domino. It may not do it as quickly or as cleanly, it might take a little bit more setup, but it will get the same job done. Let me show you how it works. To start with, why do you even need a doweling jig? You might think that you would be able to just drill in a hole here and then on your other piece, drill a hole matching in that spot. You know, you'd lay it out really carefully. Um, but the challenge is that you have to get uh, a hole that is both in the correct position uh, vertically, horizontally, and that's angled perfectly straight. You know, it can't be uh, tilted like this in the hole. Getting that lined up for just one dowel can be difficult enough, but trying to get two or three dowels all lined up perfectly with uh, in the hole and with the, the other board uh, and between themselves, so the distance between the three holes here and the distance between the three holes here are exactly the same, is nearly impossible. So you need something to guide the bit. Now, this one works in three different ways. Uh, first of all, you have these pins that center the, the hole on a workpiece. So uh, there are three different size holes for three different size dowels. Uh, depending on which one you're using, depends on which two posts you use. Um, here I'm gonna use the 5 16 hole, uh, and so I'm gonna use these two posts here. And you just twist it on there like that, and that creates, that forces the hole to be perfectly centered no matter how thick your workpiece is. No matter how thick it is, when you twist it on there like that, it's going to uh, always be centered vertically in the board. The second way that you can use the jig is with this included fence. In this mode, you actually push the jig up against the workpiece, and that sets the depth from the end of the board where the hole will be. And the third way that you can use this is with this centering guide here. In this mode, you would draw a line on your board, put the jig down, line it up on that line, and then that's how you know that you're drilling where the center of the hole is going to be drilled. There are essentially three types of joints that you can make with this jig, and which joint you're working on depends on how you use the jig. The first one is this uh, plain butt joint, where you just have two uh, boards coming together at a right angle. The second is more of a panel type glue up, where you're just butting two, two boards together end to end. Um, this is something you might do if you're uh, building a tabletop and you're gluing multiple boards together into a larger panel. Uh, this would keep them aligned. And the third is a butt joint just straight in the middle of the board. Here's how you do each of those. All three of the joints start by using that twisting motion on the end of your first board. So you twist it into position, put the drill bit in, and then maybe we'll do one more in the center. And again, you don't have to pre-mark any of this out. Um, this first board can be, the holes can be anywhere you want. Okay, and as you can see, the dowels just fit pretty smoothly in there. For our plain right angle butt joint, we're going to need to drill matching holes here. But first, we need to set the fence up. To set up the fence, you take, you take the jig and you place it on that dowel. And then you take your fence and you push it in and you add the nuts to lock it in. You want to make sure the fence is pushed up nice and snug to the edge of the board and then tighten those knobs down. And now that hole is lined up with the same depth as this piece. The next thing we want to do 
is we want to take these boards and we want them uh, lined up on the edges here so that they're flush with each other. And then we will clamp that down. Now, this has little slots in here. Each of these slots lines up perfectly with the hole uh, that they go with. And so what we'll do is we will put that slot over that first pin that we inserted. Now the fence determines our depth into this, into this piece. And the dowel that it's registering with will determine, will make sure that it's lined up side to side. And then as you go, you add dowels to each hole. And there you have your joint. A face joint will use the same starting setup. The only thing that's different is how we drill out the second piece. We'll use the same fence setup as before, but this time we will line up these edges of our board, and this time we'll hold it from the bottom. And just like that, we now have a face joint as well. You can see it's li it lines up really well. And finally, if we want to attach this right in the middle of this board, we will again use the same setup on the first board, uh, but this time we need to remove our fence from the jig. So on the second piece, we're gonna scribe a line where we want the center of that joint to be. Uh, now, if this was an actual project, you know, this would need to be a little bit more precise. You would need to measure in where this was gonna be. Uh, for this uh, example, I can just make a line anywhere on the board, as long as it's straight and square to the side. We're gonna line up this board and we're gonna make sure it's far enough away from our line marking here. And it doesn't have to be super flush here. And again, we wanna make sure that this is nice and square and flush on the sides here. And then we line it up with that line on both sides. And there we have yet another way to use the jig. So we have our right angle joint, our face frame joint, and a right angle in the center of a board. There are of course limitations with this jig. Because of the distance between the centering pins, the maximum thickness of board you can use is about an inch and a half. That's fine for any projects that I do. I think the bigger limitation though is in the width of your board. This board's two and a half inches wide. And as you can see, the centering pins just barely fit on that board. Um, but then you'd only have one pin in this board and it would be able to rotate and that wouldn't really work. Technically, the minimum you could do is maybe three inches wide, but then you're gonna have two pins that are gonna be really close together in the very center of the board. I think realistically, you're looking at four inches at a minimum width for using this jig. There are some things that are annoying about it too. Saying the depth of the drill bit can be really finicky and really difficult to do. And then you usually have to change it for the different sides of the joint you're doing. Because the dowels are about an inch and a half long, if you did both holes the same depth, you'd actually drill through a three quarter inch board. And so what you have to do is on one side, set the drill to be an inch deep and on the other side, be half an inch deep. I think I'll end up buying a second set of drill bits so that I can leave one set to an inch and the other set to half an inch and just switch out the drill bits as needed. Also, keeping it flat against the workpiece can be kind of tricky. Um, I felt like the more that I used it, the more feel I had for how it should be positioned and where my hand should go. But it's not always perfect and occasionally you just get a bad hole. And finally, this isn't a high-end tool. It actually broke while I was filming this. I dropped it on the ground and one of the pins actually broke off. Now, luckily for me, I can still use it for the two largest holes, but the smallest one, which is what you would use for half inch material, won't work anymore. I'm gonna reach out to the company and see if I can get a replacement. But even if they do replace it, I'll still need to be careful with it. It's not like it's made out of metal. But overall, I'm really impressed by this. This is actually cheaper than a pocket hole jig. But the results that it produces are really clean. You don't see the joint. There's nothing to cover up. You put some glue in it and you clamp it together and then it's done. If you want to get one of these for yourselves, there's a link in the description.